Annie Bojo, hello and welcome. My name is Charlotte Bigcanoe and I am an Indigenous art educator here at the Art Gallery of Ontario. My pronouns are she, her, they. Together, we're going to explore a creative visual description of an artwork from Robert Houle, Red is Beautiful, which is on exhibit at the AGO until April 18th, 2022. We'll begin today with the land acknowledgement. Although we're meeting in the virtual world, I would like to acknowledge that the AGO is located on lands that are the traditional homes of the Michi Sagi Nishnabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Huron Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. Toronto continues to be home to many Indigenous people who live alongside settlers, newcomers, and people whose ancestors were enslaved across the Americas and the Caribbean. As someone with both First Nations and settler ancestry, I am grateful to live and work on this land. Recognizing this in a meaningful way means making commitments to sharing and upholding responsibilities to all who now live on these lands and the land itself. In our time together today, let's be mindful of these commitments. I'm going to describe myself. I'm standing in my apartment in front of a red brick wall. My hair is dark brown with some gray streak throughout, falling just past my shoulders. I have brown eyes and I'm wearing a black turtleneck shirt and large beaded earrings. The earrings are made up of small turquoise, yellow, gold, and red seed beads and are oval in shape. At the center of the earrings have a large piece of caribou antler. So what is a creative visual description? Audio description is spoken or written language, either recorded live, describing visual images or objects, enabling blind and partially sighted audiences to engage and pursue their own journey in theater and film performance and visual art. While television and theater use pure audio audio description for visual arts, we're lucky that we can take a more creative approach. This involves interpretation combined with description and close looking. This helps account for the subjective nature of visual arts. This form of audio description is often called creative visual description. AGO art educators typically include creative visual descriptions in AGO multi-sensory tours. When describing, they establish an initial sense of the artwork, the overall composition, how the eye is drawn towards different elements, how the artist materials are used and their effects, all in order to form an understanding of the artwork. In the tour context, this description process involves a lot of conversation, questions and answers, and accounting for multiple perspectives. Profound descriptions are created with a diversity of people working together. Today, I'm going to share a visual description that I've been working on, for the Robert Houle exhibition, Red is Beautiful. Red is Beautiful consists of over 90 large installations, paintings, and drawings created between 1970 and 2021 that challenge our understanding of Western and Indigenous art making. Houle has been influenced in his life strongly by Indigenous spirituality, growing up immersed in Soto spiritual practices, as well as Catholicism through his time in residential schools. Houle's work often holds the duality of these lives, combining traditional Indigenous items such as medicine bags and understandings of sacred geometry with Western techniques of sculpture and painting. Houle's impressive body of work challenges our understanding of Western and First Nation art history and offers ways to develop understanding between the cultures. This exhibition is a walk through 50 years of what matters to First Nations and settler relations today through the eyes of this groundbreaking artist. You can follow a creative visual description audio tour of the Robert Houle exhibition on the Blind Square Events app. So here is the visual description. We'll start with the label information. Robert Houle, born 1947, St. Boniface, Manitoba. The Pines, 2002 to 2004. Oil on canvas. The center panel measures 91.4 centimeters by 121.9 centimeters. And the two outer panels measure 91.4 centimeters by 91.4 centimeters each. Three green and blue paintings hang in a horizontal row. Two monochrome square canvases frame a pine forest on a rectangular canvas in the center. On the left, a square canvas is painted with horizontal brush strokes in a monochromatic deep green. In the central rectangular canvas, a line of bluish green tree trunks leads diagonally from the right corner in the foreground into the left background. Past a clearing in the left foreground of the canvas, the tree trunks cast shadows on the ground leading deeper into the forest where a bright yellow sky peeks through the green foliage. To the right of this canvas, a square canvas is painted with horizontal brushstrokes in a monochromatic deep blue. 
This triptych commemorates the 78 days in the summer of 1990 when Ganyakahaga, Mohawk, land defender, sent up a blockade to prevent the town of Oka from building a golf course on the pine forest, a sac sacred burial ground. In the center panel of the painting, which depicts the tree trunks of the pine forest, there is a bright yellow sky in the distance. However, the shadows cast on the ground by the trees are pointing towards the yellow sky, as if there is a secondary light source behind where we are standing. Hool has depicted the pines in this way to create a feeling of this area being otherworldly, highlighting the spiritual nature of these lands. The pines seem almost magic with a serene silence full of the presence of the ancestors buried here. The two panels of solid color on either side bring you into this world of deep blues and greens. And within this immersion into space and place, we are challenged to understand that this calm collection of trees was also once a location of violence. Deeper into this forest, there is one pine tree that appears to have been cut down, possibly signifying the loss of life experienced during the 78 day blockade. SQ Corporal Marshall LeMay was fatally shot and Mohawk elder Joe Armstrong was stuck, struck in the chest with a large rock, suffering a fatal heart attack the next day. These serene trees hold stories of pain, of loss and also resilience. In this painting, the pine trees seem close enough to touch as if we are standing in the middle of the forest, not at the edge of it. By situating us inside the forest, Hool is asking us to consider our relation to this land, as well as our place and responsibility in settler and indigenous relationships moving forward. Hool centers both the violence and pain experienced by these lands, as well as the incredible conviction held by the Ganyakahaga people to protect them. I hope this creative audio description helps excite you about his work, as Hool's work holds a special place in my heart. His work has greatly inspired my own through his expressive use of color and modern abstract art styles. Chima and thank you for taking time out of your day to watch and listen with me. I encourage you to check out the other audio descriptions in the exhibition on the exhibition webpage or try writing your own. We would love to receive them. You can share them in the comments below of this video or on other social channels by using the hashtag AGOMakes. Please enjoy the exhibit and Bama P. We will talk soon.